Hi there, we are delighted that you can be with us here at Luton Christian Fellowship on this Good Friday. It's great that you can be here to worship with us. John 3.16 reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, and whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Isn't that just a wonderful thing? And as we remember Christ's sacrifice for us, let us also remember the incredible love that God the Father has for us. So come and join us now as we worship our wonderful Saviour and our mighty God. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. Oh, 
Romans 5 verse 8 reads, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's so wonderful to think that God loves us that much, even though he knows what we do, what we think, how we behave. He still loves us. It's just so incredible. We're about to sing our second song, and the words of the third verse go like this. When I stand before the throne at last, his blood will plead my innocence. I will worship him with holy hands and raise the song that never ends of Jesus Christ, my righteousness. Let's worship together. When I stand accused of my regrets And the devil roars his empty threats I will preach the gospel to myself That I am not a man condemned For Jesus Christ is my defense My sin is nailed to the cross My soul is healed by the scars The weight of guilt I bear no more Praise the Lord Hey, my name's Joel and I, I want to tell you a bit about my story. So I was an alcoholic and I could not stop drinking. I was trying and trying and trying to stop drinking, but I'd get a few days and then I'd, then I'd relapse and each time was getting worse and worse, often ending up in hospital or laid up in bed. But then one day I did what an atheist never does. 
I prayed. I said to God, God, if I'm gonna drink again, kill me right now. And I stepped into a busy road during rush hour. The awesome thing is, not a single car came near me and I haven't desired a drink since. And at the time of filming this, that'd be almost three years. And the really, really, really good news is, Jesus answered my prayers. And I believe that he answers all prayers, that he loves to set us free. And I know in my own life that Jesus has set me free from whatever was troubling me. Is a rich man worth more than a poor man? A stranger worth less than a friend? Is a, a baby worth more than an old man? Your beginning worth more than your end? Is a president worth more than his assassin? Does your value decrease with your crime? Like when Christ took the place of Barabbas, would you say he was wasting his time? How much do you think you're worth? Would anyone stand up and say, would you say that someone is worth nothing until someone is willing to pay. If you heard that your life had been valued, that a price had been paid on the nail, would you ask what was traded, how much, who paid it, who was it, what was his name? If you heard that his name was called Jesus, would you say that the price was too dear Held to the cross, not by nails, but by love. It was you and I broke his heart, not a spear. Would you say it was worth what it cost him? You, you say no, but the price stays the same. If that doesn't make you cry, laugh it off, pass him by. But just remember the day when you threw it away. He gave what he thought you were worth. Sent him to 
shall fill my heart Then shall I bow In humble adoration And then proclaim My God how great Thou art Then sings my song My Savior God to Thee How great Thou art How great Thou art Then sings my song My Savior God to Hey, I've got some really good news to tell you. About 15 years ago, um, as a teenager, I was lost, I was hurt, I was broken, and I wore a mask, and this mask made me do things that I really didn't want to do. Um, and I got invited to a, a church service, and this youth pastor was sharing his story, and it was the first time I heard a story that I could relate to. It's like he was describing everything that was happening in my life at the time, and he said this one word, he goes, if you put your trust into Jesus, your life can completely change and that's what I done that night I said to Jesus I'm sorry um, I, I receive your love and I, I choose to follow you and that night Jesus completely changed my life around I, I found freedom I was loved and I, I found purpose in life and the really good news is just as Jesus done that to me he can do the same with you Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering, familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised. And we held him in low esteem. Surely, he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet, we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed. For we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, 
he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? He was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet, it was the will of the Lord to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great and he will divide the spoils with the strong because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. There's a basic rule of life which most right-minded people would agree with, which goes like this. If you break the law, you should pay the penalty. So, question is, what happens if you or I break God's law? Now, you may say, you may say to me, well, hang on a minute, Gary, what are you talking about? Are you talking about the Ten Commandments? Well. Ten Commandments are pretty good rules for living, and most of us, if we're honest, have broken most of them. But 2,000 years ago, the religious leaders of the day had actually come up with more than 600 rules that you had to keep if, if you were going to have your act together with God, as it were. And then along comes Jesus, and he says, there are not 600 rules. There, there are not actually even 10 there are two, and actually even the two are really one. Jesus said, here's God's law, love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, even then we have a problem because the truth of the matter is if we're, if we're honest with ourselves and honest with God, we'd have to say uh, that we haven't kept that one basic rule because we've put ourselves first, other people second, and, and God last to a greater or lesser degree. So uh, what is the penalty for breaking God's law? Well, uh, in the New Testament, it puts it like this. It actually says that the wages of sin or the result of our self-centeredness is death. Not mean, meaning physical annihilation, but meaning that spiritually, relationally, we are separated from God. And that's the situation that most of us live our lives in because we don't know God, even if he exists, he's some dim, distant person out there beyond, beyond the clouds or something. But here's the deal. What about if someone else paid the penalty for our selfishness, for our wrongdoing, for our rebellion against God? What about if someone who had actually been sinned against had actually paid for it? Now, when Jesus was crucified, when he died that horrendous, brutal death on the cross, one of the New Testament writers described it like this. He said, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, bringing us back to himself. 
through the crucifixion of Jesus uh, all those years ago. So uh, that's it. If you are willing, if you or I are willing, the Christian faith says that we can actually come back into friendship with God, not because we're good enough, not because we d we've deserved it in any way, shape or form, but because God has been good enough out of his love for us to pay the penalty fully and completely and reconcile us to himself. Now, if that's true, it's the best news in the world. If it's not true, well, there's a lot of deceived people out there. Hi, my name is Mark and I'm from Birmingham. I was one of those people that didn't grow up in a Christian home. I didn't hang around with any type church people. And somehow in my upbringing, I completely missed the facts about Christianity. When I came into the orbit of Christianity, I had a vague notion that Jesus had died, but I didn't know why. I, when I heard about the resurrection or Jesus coming back to life, I never knew that was even a possibility. My knowledge of Christianity was very limited. And so the really good news for me is, is that even though I didn't know anything, God could still speak to me and I could still understand his love. And as I gave my life to him, I found tremendous purpose in God. And that's really good news. Have anyone in your life who after they've read a really good book or watched a really good film they get so excited and animated and telling you about what's happened that they tell you how the story ends too. I usually get really frustrated when the end of the story is spoilt because it robs me of the chance of going on the twists and turns of how the story unfolds and what happens next. And that's kind of how I feel about Good Friday too. Good Friday, we already know how the story ends. But today, instead of feeling frustrated about knowing how the story ends, I feel really excited. I feel really thankful and grateful that I've got a spoiler, that I know the spoiler as to how the story ends. Today, as we share communion together, there can be a sense in which we should come with sorrow and mourning because this is the day uh, that Jesus would have given up his life for us. But we know how the story ends. We know how the Easter weekend story ends in that Jesus rises again from the grave. But not only that, we know how the ultimate story ends in that Jesus is coming back as king to rule and reign over all. We have multiple spoilers which help us in how we live today and how we celebrate this Easter weekend. So as we share in communion today, I invite you to come with a posture of hope expectation, anticipation, knowing how the story ends, both that Jesus is alive today and that he is reigning uh, on high, but also the ultimate story that we can have ultimate confidence and hope for the narrative of our lives through the twists and turns of how life is unfolding day by day. We can have confidence in God that Jesus is coming back as our reigning king. So with all that said, let us share in communion together now. And I'm reading from Mark 14. It says, As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. He then broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take it, for this is my body. So let's share in that together now. And then it goes on to say, And he took a cup of wine, 
and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and they all drank from it. And he said to them, this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out for the sacrifice of many. Let's share in that now. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that you sent your son into the world that we might have life and hope and know the freedom and joy that comes from knowing Jesus. Lord, we thank you for giving up your life for us on this day many, many thousands of years ago that we might know you and come into relationship with you, know forgiveness of sins, know eternal life. And Lord, today I pray that you would help us in our confidence of the future hope, not only that you are reigning on high, that you have risen from the dead, but also that you are coming back as King and Lord over all. Lord, we thank you for this hope and confidence that you give us. Help us to live in this truth day by day, moment by moment, through all the twists and turns in the narrative of life. Lord, we thank you that your presence is here with us today and that you hear our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love what my friend Gary has been uh, talking to us about at our Good Friday service today and um, I didn't even know he had it in him that was great spoken word of course written by an amazing very famous Christian songwriter many many years ago a gentleman by the name of Graham Kendrick just asking is a rich man worth more than a poor man and helping us to understand just what we are worth that Jesus was willing to give up his life for people like you and people like me and of course we've we've heard different stories for some different people of how that's worked out for them in their life and, and Gary reminded us that actually if we do things wrong we do deserve to be punished but what is Good Friday all about if it's not about the fact that Jesus is saying this is available not just for one or two like the people we've heard tell their story today but it's available for everybody and what if it was what if it was true that Jesus really did die and take the punishment for our wrong uh, and that he really did came come back alive as as Gary hinted at Easter is all about understanding that Jesus did die and take the punishment and in just a few days time We'll be celebrating Easter Sunday when he came back alive. But you know what? We can steal a little bit of celebration today because Jesus took the punishment for your wrongs so that you could be forgiven, so that you could be connected with God. And he came back alive so you could truly, truly live. So how can you make it not just true, but how can you make it true for you? I often say there's three ways that you can respond to God you see you may not know it you may not feel it but right now as uh, I'm speaking and as you've been watching this Easter uh, Good Friday service God is calling you and inviting you to put your life in his hands to say what I call a big yes a big yes is about saying to God God I've left you out of my life, but I want you in my life right now. A big yes is about saying, God, I receive your forgiveness and your new life because of your son, Jesus. And saying a big yes to God is saying to God, with your help, I'll turn away from doing things my own way, going in the direction of life without you and turn around and follow you and go in the direction of life with you. If you're listening to this today and you've never, ever said a big yes to God, why don't you right now where you're listening to this, 
Just say a big yes to God. Just say it inside. You don't need any specialised formula or prayer that's constructed cleverly. Just from your heart, say yes, God. Yes, God. And you can say yes, God, because God's already said yes to you. But it might be that you're watching here today and say, you know, Mark, I'm not really ready to say a big yes to God right now. And I wonder whether I might invite you to say what I call a little yes, which is about making an intentional decision to investigate, to find out more. You're not really at the place where you can commit to becoming a Christian, to becoming a Jesus follower, but you can commit to going on a journey to investigate. We're running as a movement called Elim, an online alpha course, uh, which has been run by millions of people and helped millions of people across the world to process what they think about faith. Uh, saying a little yes would be a great way of signing up to Alpha and saying, yeah, I'm going to investigate. I'm going to look into it. If you're watching this with a local church who's invited you, you can speak to somebody from that church. They may well be one of those churches that is running Alpha. But if you're watching this just on the Elim Pentecostal YouTube channel, you've just come across it maybe and you're not connected with any Elim Church, then you could simply go along to www.elim.org.uk forward slash really good news and get in contact with us and we'd love to help you. So you can make an intentional decision to find out more. It might be that you're listening here today and you say, do you know what, Mark, I'm not even ready to do that. I wonder if I might just lay a very gentle challenge to you today and that is to become what I call a healthy maybe. A healthy maybe is someone who's willing to become open-minded about the possibility of God and Jesus and the Christian faith that it may be true or if you're already open-minded to that maybe you could make a commitment to, to remain open-minded to take your oh maybe there's something in this and don't let it dissipate, don't let it fizzle out, but just kind of activate it, make it healthy so it lives. Maybe you might speak to somebody that you know, just to find out a little bit more about why, why they believe in God and why they celebrate Easter. So big yes, a little yes, healthy maybe. We would love to help you in your journey of life and faith. And so why don't you get in contact with us and let us know whether you're a big yes, a little yes, or a healthy maybe. Thank you so much for engaging with us today and watching this Good Friday service. If you're able to, we're back on again uh, tomorrow morning on, on Saturday at about 11 o'clock for young children and families. And then we're back on uh, this channel on uh, Easter Sunday and then Sunday evening again. Or if you again watching it through a local church, you can just chat to them and say, let me know when the rest of your Easter services are happening. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. God bless.